what's up guys it's ray back with another video if you're new to my channel hey if you already been here hey but let's get right into it today we're doing butterfly locks oh my gosh you guys loved my ceiling video so much that i went ahead and wanted to go ahead and do a full tutorial for you guys so here we go first we're going to be individually braiding the client's natural hair now let's talk parting real quick you don't want to do two small parts and you also want to make sure you window your parts this is very 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 important do not put try not to put braids right on top of each other where it's not windowed the brick method the window method whatever you like to call it that is what we need to do because these locks are i won't say on the larger side but they're on a the chunkier side you just don't want your client to be looking all scalpy and stuff you know so let's just you know make sure we got them looking nice and full today we are using water wave i like lulu tress i do not like free tress well that's a whole nother video for a whole nother time but lulu tress water wave and also marley hair what I do is I take two pieces of the Lulu Tress and I fluff them out. Fluff them out, split them up, whatever you have to do. Make them nice and fluffy. And then with my Marley hair, I take one piece of the Marley hair and I split that in half. And I use half a piece for each lock to braid down my base. You want to make sure you have five to six packs of the water wave hair and about two packs of Cuban twist should get you through uh, an entire head. So we're going to start by taking that half of piece of Marley hair and we're going to braid that over her natural hair. Now you can do this the knotless method i don't like doing it the knotless method because the hair pieces are uneven and that just becomes a headache to braid especially if the person has thin hair so i just braid it over it takes a little tiny bit longer but it's not that bad so we're going to start by crocheting your water wave hair on into the braid and you're going to have you know two pieces on the opposite side of the braid and what you're going to want to do is pull the hair so that one side one piece is pretty short really short uh, you're going to want it shorter than the marley hair and you're just going to grab that the marley hair and the short piece in one hand i'm showing you the length here and you're going to start wrapping and so you're gonna wrap like a regular faux lock about three or four times. I smooth it over with my thumb and I just, you know, wrap it nice and tight for the first couple of times. Now, y'all go easy on me because I look a little awkward trying to do this because I'm trying to do it in a way that you guys can see it well on camera. But now I'm doing the thumb method. What you wanna do is you wanna loosen your grip. You don't wanna wrap it tight. That is the key when it comes to your locks being able to move. Do not wrap it tight. Wrap it nice and loosely. You wanna stick your thumb into the hair. Like you could do it in the middle, you could do just a little bit. I kinda just randomize it. And you wanna wrap it when you stick your thumb in. And then when, you, when you're when wrapping it with your thumb in it, I pull. I like to pull my thumb up a little bit off of the lock so that it gives it that butterfly that that uh, loop coming out of the lock and as you can see i do it pretty randomly i don't do it like every time uh but you want to do it often you don't want to do it too sparsely because then it'll start looking too neat and you don't want it to be too neat you want it to look a little messy and and stuff so also please remember to loosen your grip because I kept tightening my grip. I have a habit of doing that from doing regular locks and just, just make sure you're wrapping loosely. Now let's talk length. So you wanna make sure, cause I see a lot of people 
st try to do the style and they and their and their locks end up being a lot uneven and things like that so you want to make sure you're using a guide you can use the lock next to it you can use the lock you started with but you want to make sure you use a guide and what i do we're going to do the the my loop method and from my last video and we're wrapping 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 then we get to the end we wrap it four or five times like a regular faux lock separate a small piece of hair fold the rest of the hair up and use that small piece of hair to secure it and wrap it around then you take some nail glue you secure it with that and wrap the rest of that small piece around and you're secure that lock is not going anywhere i promise and you cut that excess hair off and you are good to go i don't like the whole um just wrap it back up method not with this hair because it's softer it's much softer than spring twist hair the, the, the curl is looser so it does it's not going to hold as well if you try to do that with this uh lulu tress hair or any water wave hair for that matter So I'm going to show you guys again how I do it. I'm just going to take that uh, Marley hair and start. Sorry, I'm all in the camera. Uh, don't come for me. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. But we're braiding it over the braid, the natural hair. We don't braid it. We don't need to braid it all the way down. You just braid it about an inch down when you add the Marley hair. Oh, here I'm showing you how I parted it in the back. I used that round method and I part ear to ear in the back and I made two rows in the back. So that's her back. That's how the back of her hair looks. Why did I say back so many times? Anyway, just watching, um, just go ahead and watch and watch me do this again. And I'm going to talk a little bit about parting again. We're going to talk about this round method. So a good rule of thumb for me when I do the round method, of course, it depends on the person's size of the person's head. Because if somebody has a big head, you're going to have to do uh, more parts because you just you just don't want them to look sparsy. Um, I do a rule of thumb from the parting from the top of the ear all the way up it should be one two three four five rows about five rows five to six rows depending on the size of the person's head from the top of the ear from the from the top of the ear up you're always going to do two rows in the back i do about two or three rows in the back but from the top of the ear up is going to be five or six rows that's a good rule of thumb for your sizing if you want to do them this size of course if you want to do them smaller then absolutely make them smaller but that's how i like to do them Also, I forgot to mention earlier, 
when you're doing the length, you can see here that that one that I'm doing right now is a little bit longer than the one that I'm using as a guide. You want to do it like that. You want to make it about a half an inch longer when you're wrapping because when you go to loop it, when you go to turn it up, it's going to get shorter. So you want that to match like that. So when you're wrapping it down, you're going to wrap it down a little bit further than that than that one that is already done next to it. So that when you're looping it up, it matches is the same length and you're good to go. And it's not like a bunch of different lengths all throughout the head. Last thing I want to mention before I go is why I use Water Wave hair instead of Spring Twist. I like to use Water Wave because Spring Twist tends to give me too much frizz. Like, I don't like that. It gives me way too much frizz when I'm trying to do these locks. I like my locks to be nice and soft and pretty and not really frizzy. So the Water Wave hair works so much better for that. And this was the finished product. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. If you have any questions, let me know. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.